So today, we're going to talk about iterating. So if you're following the dip and pick part of the design process, we're almost at the end, right? That last I, iterate. And iterating means that we're going to go backwards. So today we are going to review the whole design process. And I want you to think about everything that we review from a lens of, do I need to update that? Can I make it better? And also, can I apply it this process with finer details. Most of you have probably thought more of high level things, big solution now. Now we're trying to tweak things on a finer level. And you'll do even more of that once you have your prototype for testing and you can really pinpoint areas where you might be able to make things better. So we're going to review the design process. We're in the iterate. We have an idea. Now, do we, now what do we do? So this is part of the detailed design process. We're making a prototype to meet our specifications. So we're in this detailed design phase where we're talking about prototyping, testing, analyzing, but also iterating. So we're building it, we're making it, and we're going to iterate with finer details. So I'm going to review the whole design process because we're going to iterate the whole process here. I'm going to start all the way from the beginning to the end. So this will be hopefully the third time you've seen all of this because we went through the design process earlier then we went through each part of it in some more detail and now we're going to review it one more time keep in mind thinking about do I need to update this do I need to make finer adjustments finer details break it down so we'll start with problem definition define or the problem identification and specification development phase. Here, you define your problem. You get a statement, one of four sentences, clearly defining your problem with details. We gave you a very broad statement. You are working on defining that problem in your own words, um, labeling or narrowing down or defining the scope of your problem. So it still is pretty broad, but we don't want a bunch of fluff, and it's definitely solu solution neutral. Okay, we do not think about solutions at all during this defined part of the design phase. And it's best to be done after you've done all of your research. So ask questions, ethnographic research, uh, patents, searching for current solutions, uh, doing some interviews, listen to the voice of your customer, and it's never written in stone never written in stone, so think about your problem statement. Should I update it, make it better? You probably have done more research between the first report when you wrote it and now, most likely. It just kind of happens, it comes out naturally. Maybe you weren't able to meet with as many of your stakeholders early enough as you wanted to, and now you gotta go back. So you can still refine your problem statement and update it. And think about your stakeholders. Think about who they are, what are their needs. Each of these customers or stakeholders may have different needs, okay? This is a very important part of the design process because if you come up with something but it doesn't meet your stakeholder needs, you will not have solved the problem. So it's important to define exactly what the problem is, figure out what they need, and then we already have sort of iterated. We're already working on needs down to requirements, down to specifications. So you're definitely going to want to iterate at this point here. All right. So you want sort of a wish list. Your needs were vague. They have to be interpreted. Your customer can tell you what they want. They might not know exactly what they want. Maybe it's in a different, uh, stated a different way. And you're going to work on taking what they've said and making it into requirements, some more details, still no solutions, all right? Still no solutions. And it may be different for different customers. And once you have those, now we get into more of the engineering-ish side of things where we take our requirements and we make them measurable, okay? So criteria we want to meet that's measurable. So some sort of metric and a value. 
So even finer details at this point. And this is a very difficult yet very important part of the design process. If you have measurable criteria, you will know if you have met your criteria or not because you've measured it. And you will know if you've basically come up with a solution that will work or not and how well it will. All right. So this is very important and is not easy, not easy at all. So if you have questions, if you're working on them, ask. It's not easy for us either. Okay, a lot of this stuff is not as easy to. We have a little bit more experience than you, so hopefully we can help you, but we can work together to try to brainstorm ways to make your needs measurable. One tool to help you do this is the House of Quality. It is not a requirement, but it can be very useful. So you can list all of your needs from your different customers. You can even rank their relative importance. And then think of engineering metrics and try to match them, map them to your customer needs. And make sure that each of your needs is mapped to some value that's measurable, some goal. And then the house of quality is really nice because you can benchmark current solutions out there and help define your problem and show that there is a need that's not quite met yet. But this is not a requirement. Many of you had um, lots of great info on the pros and cons of different current solutions. That works just as well. Okay, so this could be a tool or you can do kind of the pros and cons way of defining your problem and showing that current solutions do not meet the customer needs. And this may also help you make sure you have specifications for each of your needs. Questions on the define part of the prop, uh, design process. I would guess you have specific questions. So we'll get to those and I'll be able to come around to each of your groups and chat with you all, see if we can help work on your specifications and try to make all of them, if possible, measurable. All right, some of them may have to be sort of a constraint, a yes or no question. Um, and those will probably be ranked with, you know, 0 to 10, 10 importance, and then they get a 0 or a 1 kind of thing. Next, the fun part. Let's figure out a solution to our problem. Let's ideate, OK? This is the conceptual design phase. We're going to think of solutions. And we have to evaluate which is the best solution. What are we going to move forward with? So we've got some tools. We can reverse engineer. We can do functional decomposition, break apart our problem into smaller problems. We can brainstorm. So we got three different methods that we could use besides the conventional method. And so this part of the process is really great for the finer details, especially ideation. Once you've built a second prototype, you can ask yourself these questions about how you could possibly make it met better. Can we eliminate things? Can we rearrange things? Can we substitute things? Combine things? If you're thinking about finer details, we're still going to be brainstorming. We're still going to be ide ideating at this point of, of the process, circling back around. Once you have lots of ideas, we have a bunch of different tools to help you narrow them down. So funnel them down. And we will ultimately have a decision matrix to show and prove that we have picked the best idea. So you can use these for narrowing things down. But ultimately, you will have a decision matrix to confirm which of your choices meets your specifications the best. All right, so it's sort of taking this house of quality and transforming it to look almost the same. But we've got different solution ideas and all of our specifications. And now we're ranking them. And they all have a relative importance. And we should come out with a winner of it ideas. Also, don't number your ideas. Make them descriptive titles. Who knows what idea 10 is? 
Um, so that's one way to do it. There are multiple ways to do it. You could also do a plus minus and tally the pluses and minuses and weight them as well. You could still have them weighted and come out with a score. So the important thing is you showcase three, four ideas and you rank them. Figure out how well they meet specifications and you can go back to this. Once you have your prototype for testing, you can actually go back to this then and measure these things um, and see how well you meet the specifications and show that it, it was a good idea. So you will have a decision matrix and before that you will probably narrow down using different methods to maybe three or four ideas. That's the ideate part. That's the fun part, right? Ooh, let's do this. Ooh, that's a great idea. Planning is not always as fun, but I throw this in as part of the dip and pick because we are always actually iterating on our plan, always coming back to our schedule, making sure that we're updating things, that we're meeting weekly, that we are looking at our problem statement and actually solving the problem we set out to do, that we assign people tasks, that we check in each week. So we are continuously planning, continuously iterating on our plan. And if you haven't updated your Gantt chart in a while, you should do that now. Time is going to be slipping by us quickly here. So if you can stay organized, keep your plan moving and on schedule, things will go a little bit more smoothly. All of what we've talked about so far is stuff that you've been working on a bunch. We've seen you do it, all right? We know you've done work there. Now is the time to go back and think about updating things, especially your specifications, and thinking about all of those things in terms of finer details. Maybe you do a decision matrix for a material selection for a specific piece of your project. Okay? Finer, finer details. Right now, you're in the detailed design phase where we're prototyping and iterating. So we're building, we're making, we're testing, we're analyzing. We're at this point here, so you're working on your prototype number two now and then you'll start analyzing it. You'll start doing tests. And iteration is really supposed to happen throughout all parts of the design process, but definitely now, definitely when we do this detailed design. If you don't need to update anything and things are looking pretty good from earlier, you still want to go back and think about finer details of all of our things. Smaller and smaller parts. Break it down. At the end of detailed design, you are really, there's a few more things about delivery and instruction manual and thing that we'll cover later, but you're going to have a prototype, you're going to have prints, drawings, schematics, SolidWorks models, uh, manufacturing routings, production plan, bill of materials that you learned in manufacturing class, and testing. So you'll have three or more tests with results and a reflection or conclusion on those. That's detailed design. And as a reminder, our testing protocol, we have specific things that we're looking for. We have our product, what the test is, what kind of a test it is, who's doing it, any background you need, the materials you may need to gather before you do it, your procedure. It's kind of like an experiment. And then most importantly, an acceptance criteria so that when you do the test, you know whether you've met your specification or not. So here's where we take those specifications from before and they're coming forward now and helping us prove that we have met our specifications, helping us prove we have a solution that meets our customers' needs. So what I leave you with is the fact that we're in this iterate part of the design process, which is part of detailed design, where we are looking back, updating things as needed, and thinking in finer details. This is pretty much the entire design process right here. We've got just a little bit left at the end. Just a little bit left. 
All right, so you have essentially all the tools you need to move forward and to go back and circle back. 